Welcome back, Fiber friends. So in this very special episode today, I have a, I have Bo over here helping me. Bo, please stop eating the grass. Thank you. Um, hopefully he behaves. So today I have here uh, a Corydale fleece. This is a Cory Cross fleece. Her name is Frost. Um, she is about nine pounds, so she's she's a whopper of the fleece. Now, one of the reasons that I got a very good price on this fleece is because she is unskirted. So we have her little tag here. I have mentioned if this is uh, your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Brian. Um, I make yarn and I teach other people how to make yarn. And I'm very passionate about making yarn from fleeces that I process myself. Um, farm to fabric, as I have come to call it. If you like farm to table, you're probably gonna like this too. So we have a raw sheet fleece here. Again, this is off, off of a uh, Cory cross, a Cory Dale cross. Cory Dales are really big sheep, so it's unsurprising that we have nine pounds of fiber here. And again, a lot of these are going to come with a label and it's going to give you some scoring. I have talked about before that depending on who is doing your scoring, um, whether it is a hand spinner or somebody who is more interested in different aspects of sheep breeding, you're going to put more or less weight into this score. And I always think it's important to do your own work and look at the fleece as well. Never take the scorecard for face value. Um, so this little red dot for New York sheep and wool, that means this was an uncoated sheep. I also have a coated fleece and I'll show you guys that a little bit later, but today we want to skirt this uncoated fleece, maybe take off some of the larger pieces of VM, vegetable matter that might be inside. So that's hay, you know, seeds, grass, things like that. It also says that it, it, it has mild cotting, needs some skirting. So cotting is when the very tips of the fleece felt. A lot of these times this is more common with a coated sheep. So maybe the sheep was coated for portions of its life, but not other portions. Alrighty, so I've angled you even farther down so you can see more of this fleece and what I'm doing. I am going to take off this jacket too because it's getting, it's getting warmer. This fleece. It says that it has some cotting and that is going to be the felting together of the tips. However, I'm pretty sure this fleece might just be kind of dirty. I, I really think that a lot of this cotting is actually mud, but we're going to see. We have to, we have to open this up today. So what I'm going to do is I don't even get scissors. I don't do this elegantly. I just start splitting the bag open so that I can unroll the fleece. If I was a smarter man, I would pull out some additional covers to unroll this on. I am a smart man, so I brought out some panels for this to unfold on. Now what we're going to try to do is unfold it in the general shape of the sheep. Now sometimes it can be hard to find sort of the top or bottom portion of this, so don't, don't panic, you know, if you feel like you're starting to unroll it and the shape doesn't really make sense. Sometimes they roll them with hand spinners in mind and the fleece will make sense and sometimes they don't. So we're just going to start opening this up. Some different colors here. I'm going to push, push this part of the fleece over here. Oh my gosh, wow. We have so much wool. This is awesome. This is a really beautiful fleece. It's soft. It's big. But I don't know. I might skirt this. That seems like that seems like butt stuff. I don't really know. It can be kind of hard to know what you're looking at. And I think with this fleece, this is my first time having a fleece this large that's not from a long wool. I do think that a lot of the times, I don't know why for me, it's easier for me to visualize the entire long wool sheep when I get something like that. This whole portion up here seems pretty pristine. So along with skirting, if you're not concerned about keeping certain portions of the fleece together, Oh, 
Okay, so nine pounds of fleece. Let's talk about it. A lot of you on the live stream were like, Brian, nine pounds of fleece. What are you going to do with that? I need to remind you that this is an unskirted fleece. So right over there, I mean, it has to be at least, it's about a third of it. I'd say it's about a third of this uh, massive fleece that is ending up being skirted pieces. You think I might end up cleaning some of this and turning it into sort of like bird nesting fiber for the birds to come take in the winter? I do live in the middle of nowhere, and even though this fiber isn't good enough for me, it certainly will be good enough for some birds. However, the rest of this fleece, you know, this is the rest of it. It's pretty quality. Uh, I did very heavy skirting. Not only did I remove some breeches wool and some wool that was just really icky as I showed you, but I also removed wool that had the strongest of the cotton. So there wasn't too much wool that was completely felted together at the tip, so fully cotted, but there was some wool that did need to be removed because of cotting, and so that ended up in this pile over here as well. So your next question might be, what is my next plan of attack after we skirt the fleece? So this is a really massive fleece still. I'd say I definitely have at least six pounds of fleece before washing. Now, a quick reminder, depending on how fine your fleece is and how greasy it is, you could lose a considerable amount of weight in washing when you get rid of all of the grime and the fleece. Just another thing to keep in mind when it comes to the price of your fleeces. I do think Frost here is going to get a portion of her, I'd say maybe a pound, is going to get a cold soak so that I can see how the processing is actually going to go. Um, how difficult it is going to be to card her versus combing her, how bad this cotting really is after all of the washing and the scouring. So I'll come back to you guys with the, you know, next product once she is clean. I promise to record the rest of the process along the way as we clean her. However, right now I'm really just going to weigh out a pound and put her into a cold soak with the CVM, which also needs to cold soak. So here is the portion of fleece that I separated off. I don't know if this is more or less than a pound of Cory Cross fleece, but we're going to give this a cold soak and we'll scour it and I'll get back to you guys um, when it's all cleaned up. <laughs> Fresh trash bag for the rest of the fleece because we're not going to be processing all of this fleece today. Again, this is just a lot of fleece. I'd like to get the CVM done first, and that's about four pounds. So I think I think five pounds of fleece is a fine amount to clean at once, at least for me, that's manageable. Honestly, a lot more, a lot more reasonably sized than it was before. Still, still a really, just a heck, a heck ton of fleece, let me tell you. I'm sure this is going to be clumsy, but look, I'm not even going to skirt this. I'm not even going to really look through it before I toss it in the cold soak I already have. And the more I open it up, the more impressed I am by this fleece, this beautiful CVM fleece. Look at that color. Oh, it's getting blown out behind me. Okay, it's time to fill up our containers. Alrighty, so we're going to be starting a cold soak today. I'm going to be using Unicorn Fiber Fiber Power Scour. Um, this is not sponsored, as usual. I wish. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be nice? Free scour? Oh, God bless. That, that's the dream. I do think that some fleeces can be properly processed with other types of scouring agents. I just like the way that Unicorn Power Scour reacts with my fine wools, especially, that I might be a little bit concerned about accidentally felting. So that's why I use your Unicorn Power Scour, especially for, again, finer wools, and that's what we're processing today. I did just want to talk a little bit about why I like to start with cold soak always before anything else. Um, and I especially recommend this for beginners. I've talked about this on my TikTok, but for those of you who aren't on TikTok, I just like to share the knowledge. It's not that you have to cold soak. Again, there are no fiber fleece. There are no rules. Um, 
The thing about cold soaking though, is it does get a lot of dirt and debris out of the fleece. And that means that you can just use all of that scouring time to remove lanolin. So instead of scouring to remove dirt, grime, lanolin, and uh, you know, VM, vegetable matter, because some of that does come out during washing, not a ton, but some of it, um, you are just going to be scouring for lanolin if you do a cold soak first, because there's a lot of stuff that can, can be removed from fleece with a cold water wash. Now, again, lanolin requires a certain amount of heat in order to remove it, and I'm going to be making a more in-depth scouring video. For now, you can just reference my hot scouring TikTok video, and you can find that in my beginner spinner playlist. However, today, like usual, we're going to be starting with a cold soak. You can just use cold water if you want to. Water is an amazing solvent just by itself. However, today I am adding a little bit of Unicorn Power Scour to these tubs to just see exactly how clean I can get this fleece before scouring. So in this smaller container, I am going to be putting this Cory Cross fleece. You want to make sure to leave enough room for the fleece to actually go in. And I do like to fill up the container beforehand. Now, one of the reasons that I do this is because a lot of the times I talk about how in order to felt, especially when I'm talking about wet felting as an art rather than an accident, like with fleeces, um, you know, you need heat and you need agitation. However, there are some fibers that definitely felt a little bit more readily. Uh, finer fibers definitely come to mind. And it is once again worth noting that this fleece already has a little bit of cotting on it. So it might already have a little bit of felting and we don't want to emphasize that by agitating it, even if it is in a cold water fleece. Now, when I'm working with down fibers, the down breeds, they are notoriously difficult to felt. And I am so rough with them. I mean, not when they're under heat, but when they're going into the cold soak, I just throw them in there and I really squish them down hard. Um, I don't really worry about it. Today, I am being a little extra gentle as I'm dipping it into the cold water because we are working with a finer fiber and it's already a little bit felted. So just something to keep in mind. Every fleece is different, just like people. You gotta treat fleeces differently. You can wash one fleece one way and have it come out fantastic and apply that same technique to another fleece and have not disastrous results but maybe not the results that you planned or expected so it's worth keeping that in mind and i think a lot of the times especially with your first fleece and i remember this feeling so well you're going to want to get it done quickly because you really just want to start processing heck you just want to start spinning the wool you want to have some yarn that you can say you process from a fleece to a skein you want to have it tomorrow but it's worth remembering especially after you've done it the first time and you're on your second or third fleece and maybe you're willing to be a bit more patient um, that this is something that is going to take time and if you're willing to put in the extra time you can definitely get extra marvelous results and for context i usually try to leave this for at least 24 hours it really is amazing what 24 hours of cold soaking with a little bit of extra you know soap or solvent can do for a fleece Okay, so welcome to, it's my sister's she shed. Do you guys remember during COVID when like, oh gosh, this is why I don't, <laughs> why I don't film some of the, it's, it's not very glamorous, some of this uh, process. I don't look very nice throughout it. But anyway, do you guys remember during COVID when like everybody wanted a she shed? When like she shed sort of thing? This is my sister's she shed. I call it the wool shed now. Just just I keep that to myself. I don't think I don't think she needs to know how much I use it and how much I do wool things in here. I wash wool and I dry wool. I used to spin in here. My first ever handful of lives were actually in here, if you can believe it, which is really crazy to think about. That was a really, really long time ago. It feels like a really long time ago. It wasn't that long ago. Oh my gosh, this CVM is so buoyant. It's so hard to squish it <laughs> into the water and I'm trying to be so gentle. All right, it's starting to give a little bit. It's starting to it's starting to sink down into the water because I don't want to overfill it. But again, I want it 
to all get wet. And I know it can if I just squish it down in there. Gosh, the CVM is just so beautiful though. Every, every single lock, you know, that's, that's how you know. That's when you know, when every single lock on the sheet fleece just makes you like, that's your, that's your dream fleece. That's the fleece worth spending $130 on. I'm hoping I'll get more than a sweater's worth. Ooh, yeah, okay, so this is a coated fleece. I'm gonna show you guys this water too. The YouTube crowd, you guys get to see the real okay? The real, you guys get to see the real stuff. Um, the stuff that's a little bit too icky, I think, for TikTok. Maybe not, maybe the people of TikTok wanna see my dirty, my dirty, disgusting uh, wool soak water. Before I add water, I want to show you guys the color of this water. Gotta dry off my hand first. All right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just love this part. Alrighty, Fiber Friends, so as you might be able to tell from this metal container that I have here, this is actually from a restaurant supply company or a restaurant supply website. Um, essentially, it's one of those big metal inserts that they use in larger kitchens for cooking. Um, I find that it's just a really nice container to wash larger portions of fleece in. I have our Corydale already in here and I'm heating up water for the CVM. But while our Cory is finishing its soak, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the logistics of hot scouring. So again, one of the reasons I recommend to uh, cold soak first is so that when it's hot scouring like this, you are not tempted to start to agitate the fleece to get some more of that dirt and grime out. Today I am using Unicorn Power Scour. There are plenty of people who use things like Dawn. It's really a point of personal preference. Whatever you prefer to use on the type and quality of fleece that you have available to you. I don't think it's very nice to be exclusionary and say that, you know, Unicorn Power Scour is the only way to get a fleece clean. That's simply just not true. So let's all be, you know, accepting of all different financial price points here. So this fleece has been soaking for about 20 minutes now. That's about the maximum amount of time that I let my fleeces soak. You want that water to be between 120 and 140 degrees. And for fine wools, you really wanna to try to keep it at 130 to 140 degrees. Now this is to help keep the lanolin melted off and prevent it from re-solidifying onto the fleece. I am working with finer wools today. So a quarry cross and again, my CBM or California variegated mutant. Um, sometimes the white sheep of that of that group are known as Rommeldales. Absolutely beautiful fleece, but it is a little bit finer. It is going to be greasier, both of these fleeces. So I am going to be doing a little bit more in terms of scouring than I usually would for a medium fleece. I am going to be making sure to, at minimum, scour each, pe each chunk of fleece that I separate out twice. The first time with a fair amount of unicorn power scour and hot water, and the second time with mostly a clean batch of hot water. Now this is just to help sort of rinse off any extra lanolin, any extra grime, any remaining soap. The good thing about uh, unicorn power scour is you don't necessarily need to make sure you rinse all of it out. That is one of the benefits of using unicorn power scour. However, this is just, again, my process for processing these finer fleeces. When they are in the hot water, you really just need to remember to not agitate the fleece. Now, you can gently push the fleece down a bit 
to help further submerge it into the water. However, you don't want to stir or mix the fleece. If you feel like the top portion of the fleece is not getting fully clean, then maybe you should start with a smaller chunk of fleece, right? So a lot of the times as a beginner, we want it to go quickly. And so we will put as much fleece as we can possibly fit into that boiled water container. Though it may feel like we're getting there faster, a lot of the times a lot of leftover grease and lanolin is going to still be stuck to that fleece and you might end up needing to rescour it anyway. It's always more work to rescour after the fact than it is to just scour properly right off the bat. Part of that reason is again as that lanolin reforms and you leave that fleece for a while it gives it just more time to sort of get all stuck up in the fibers. Um, that's not to say that the lanolin cannot be removed post fact it's just a little bit more of an irritation. I find that it comes more evenly and cleanly off fresher fleeces. Now, washing wool really is a waiting game. Again, I try to only wait 10 to 20 minutes while the fleece is soaking. This is the second soak for our Corydale Cross fleece. And on the second soak, I can see that on the top layer of water, and I'll show you a close-up video of this, that there is a layer of lanolin, and in this second wash, there's a lot less of it. There is barely any lanolin floating up to the top. I know my water was hot enough, so that what that tells me is that maybe when I clean this Cory Cross the second time, um, I really don't need to have much soap in that second wash. It should really just be a hot rinse wash. Part of the reason that I started with the Cory Cross is I just wanted to, you know, ease my anxieties. A lot of the times when I haven't scoured a fleece in a while, and especially if I'm starting with something beautiful and precious like the CBM fleece, I get a little nervous about scouring. So it's always good to start with, if you can, maybe a fiber that you care ever so slightly less about. You know, we are still going to put all of the care and consideration into washing this fleece, but this is my uh, test run since it's been about a month since I had to scour my last fleece. A really fun side activity that we're doing today, and you might see the end product of this in the video, you might not. I am saving some of my excess water in containers, and I'm hoping that the lanolin, I can get it to re-solidify on top and I can separate it out. I've heard that this is something that you can do. I've never done it myself, but you know, we're gonna try. I'm all for science experiments and I'm all for using every single part of the fleece. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the lanolin once I have it. I'm sure I will find something. Lanolin has an incredible number of uses. Another reason that I recommend, especially even if this is your, you know, fifth time washing a fleece, maybe it's your first time washing a fine wool fleece though, I always recommend start with smaller chunks and portions of the fleece. This prevents you from accidentally ruining or accidentally felting the entire fleece. So if you get, you know, 10 pounds of Cory Cross like I did, or even a, a fairly small, you know, three to four pound CVM fleece. If you start by just washing it in half pounds and pounds, you can really nail down the perfect way to wash that fleece. I also recommend taking notes when you're washing fleeces so you can come back to those notes when you wash similar future fleeces. All right, fiber friends, so we're back. I have changed it to a t-shirt because even though it's getting pretty cold here in New Jersey, we're having a bit of a warm spell and frankly, scouring wool is a lot of work. I have to carry all this stuff up and down stairs in order to dispose of the hot water safely. I don't really recommend sending hot lanolin water down your drains if you are not a renter. Um, it, it might ruin your pipes. Just keep that in mind. Um, don't, because it, because the lanolin really solidifies when everything cools. So I just don't recommend sending this hot lanolin water down the drain. Now I have a sort of rocky area over here near my sister's she shed. We're gonna dump out some of the hot water as to not damage the greenery around us. I see like a little pine needle in here and I just wanna scoop it out. The water's hot. All right, there we go. Now, now we can continue. Cook as you're dumping the water. You'll see these little like fat bubbles floating on the top as it dumps and that is the lanolin. It's like when you make a really good soup and the fat bubbles are on top. I do try to not rush this part as to again not agitate the fiber. I called one of my friends um, who doesn't live in state to me. She lives in Texas 
and I, I was dumping out the like gross cold soap water while I was on FaceTime with her. And she was telling me I should go live because it was really soothing. Um, I feel like it's less soothing because one of my neighbors is blowing his lawn down right now. But she thought it was really soothing. Would you guys want to watch me wash fleece on live? I feel like that can't, that can't be something that people want to see. I feel like this is the part that people don't want to see. I guess if you're watching this, you guys want to see it. Because we're the cool kids. And so once the that most of the water has been drained from the fleece, I do try to be just as gentle with the fleece while it is still wet uh, for fear of agitation. So I am going to put it on, we have these plastic chairs that I have that have uh, rungs on them that'll let the fleece sort of drip dry until it cools, fully cools down. I won't bring it uh, inside until later on this evening when it's like cold to the touch. And then I will start my drying process. Now, I did just want to talk a little bit about the fact that there are a lot of different ways that you can hold fleece together and separate fleece. There is a way of maintaining the lock structure in fine wools called, I think it's called the sausage technique, where you, the sausage tool technique, that's what it's called. So you roll the locks up in tool to help maintain the structure and the direction that they are going in. Um, I, I should be better about the way that I wash my wool in terms of putting it into bags and trying to make sure it stays intact in certain points. Thus far, I've gotten away with doing what I've been doing. However, I do just want you to know that there are lots of different methods that you can use to attack your wool differently than I do. I really do consider myself a novice, a beginner, a part-time spinner. So if that sounds like you and you're just looking for a starting point, this is going to be a really helpful hot scouring video for you. I just want you to be aware that depending on the types of wools you're going to be tackling, so long wools, fine wools, down wools, they all kind of need to be scoured in slightly different ways. And there are lots of different techniques that you can use to tackle them that help keep the fleece together or less together and in certain structures. So this is just something to keep in mind as we move along. I am trying to be what I consider extra careful for me and doing everything right my way. Um, again, uh, I, when I say do it right my way, I mean in a way that I am comfortable with. I'm very concerned about accidentally felting this very beautiful fleece. So I'm going to add the water and the soap first and then gently drop the fleece into the water and let it submerge itself. And I'm gonna show you an example of what that looks like. So it is a number of days later. Uh, my wool is still drying. It's still damp. Things have gotten very cold and damp and blustery here in New Jersey very quickly over the past few days. And so it's been taking extra long for my wool to dry. But I wanted to just take a second to talk really quickly about uh, different methodologies of washing wool just one more time. There are different schools of thought in terms of, you know, how much exact scouring you should do and things like that. But I'm more talking about when it comes to maintaining the overall lock structure of the wool. Depending on the type of fleece or the type of wool that I'm working with, I tend to be more or less careful with that lock structure. So I just personally, through my personal experience, I found that certain lock structures stay together really well. I found that the CVM and I find fine wools in general generally stay the way that I want them to during the scouring process without me putting them into lingerie bags. So again, as I mentioned earlier, that is another option. You can put your locks into lingerie bags to maintain the structure and the direction that they're facing. So essentially it's easier and faster when it comes to combing specifically. However, I tend to really only reserve this, again, just personally for my super long walls because I find it's the only time when it really saves me a lot of time or matters. Personally, I kind of find it to be a fun game to flip 
the locks over and figure out which direction they need to go in because again most of them stay together in large clumps so it's pretty easy for me to sort through them and then any of them that it's harder to figure that out I do end up just carding. The plan is to card some of this and to comb other parts of it because I would like samples of both types of yarns. So Again, it is all just personal choice. If you want a super organized, you're going to comb all of it. Uh, it's a longer wool. Again, depending on how your brain works and what type of work you want to do at what stage of processing your wool, you might end up processing it a little bit differently than me, and that is all right. I think it's just important to offer a variety of different perspectives and methods when it comes to washing wool and to show you what can happen when you don't use the traditional methodologies. So a lot of folks suggest using lingerie bags. I think that's a really predominant um, thing that a lot of people in the community do when they're washing wool. And again, I do it for some of my wool washes. However, I do like showing an example of not doing that because I want my followers to know that if they just got into this and maybe they didn't follow all of the steps that they should have, that there's still plenty of beautiful and great yarn that you can make however you ended up washing the fleece. You know, the main concern here is that we're not felting the fleece, but as long as it's not felted, you still have clean wool. You're still going to make wonderful yarn. So I also like to offer it as just a bit of perspective for people who maybe, maybe didn't know better, maybe should have put uh, some of their locks into lingerie bags to help uh, keep it a little bit more organized. But but you didn't, you know, we can't undo what is done in the past. So I'm happy to offer the perspective and I hope you guys had fun today. I hope you liked coming along for this video. I know it was a little bit different in terms of its format and the way I, I organized the information, but I hope you learned something. If you want to see more of me and you don't already follow my TikTok and my Instagram, go do that. I'll have my shop linked below. And as always, Fiber friends, I hope you have a wonderful week. Go make something.